Hi guys, welcome to a new video. We're doing a sit down video. We haven't done one of these for months. Six months? Yes. Hopefully more than that, isn't it? Yeah. After our March trip last year, I think. Yeah. A few people have been asking for this one. Uh, it is the video about tolls. And um, we feel like we've got a little bit more knowledge about them after our last trip. And we did some trials as well. Yeah. Um, we were always scared of going through tolls. Um, but now we're not anymore. But we were. <laughs> it always it comes from years ago when we used to go. You used to go through a toll. You didn't have any change, and it used to beep like an emergency sign. We were like, oh my god. We used to think we'd be toll. arrested and get criminal yeah. records, didn't we? Just uh, move up a little bit, you, because you're off the edge. No, no, you're further off the edge. Mm. So um, Nick is going to take the lead in this one, and I'm going to chip in and offer my, um, you know, pointless advice when I can. So we have collected a lot of information um, regarding tolls. We've done trials and things like that. And there's five different methods. And we're going to cover all those when we do the, the, the background on the tolls. Right, so toll roads. Um, as Lee said, it's something that a lot of people tend to be scared of when they, because there's, there's a toll road when you come out of the airport at Orlando. And, and we it got caught in it this time and all. Yeah. After all the times we've been, the, the, the sat nav locked, locked up. up. We ended up on a toll road and we both were like, oh my God, we're on a toll road. We were like, oh, it's ruined this holiday. <laughs> but in reality, it's, couple of dollars so I'm gonna give you the background on it so if you don't know what toll road is toll road is basically like booths on the highways where you have to basically pay to use the highway and um, so the, the majority of toll roads in Florida are operated by the Florida Turnpike Enterprise which is part of the Florida Department of Transportation I am reading off the screen by the way I'm learning um, as well. it's about 483 miles of toll roads there are other toll roads by different sort of um, bodies that, that run around Florida um, some of the motorways or the interstates in Florida do have tolls on them as well, um, according to some of the websites that I've, run, uh, that I've, I've read. Um, there are six major interstates in Florida, so it's the I-4, 10, 95, 75, 275 and 295, so at some point you will probably end up on one of those, probably the I-4 around Orlando. We often get stuck there when we're going to Universal, don't we? Right, so, why use the toll road? I'll let Lee answer this one. Because it uh, gets you there quicker. Quicker, yeah. So and you, less traffic. Less traffic. If you are going to Cocoa Beach or Melbourne Beach, it's a lot quicker to use a toll. If you're driving from sort of Kissimmee to um, Cocoa, mean? it's around an hour and 20 minutes to get there. If you go on a toll road, it's 45 minutes. Um, but obviously, you pay for the privilege. Mm. People don't like to pay to go on tolls, which means that less people use it. There's less exits um, between tolls. Yeah, I think people who actually live in Florida, they, they use them quite a lot, yeah. a lot more, but tourists tend to stay clear of them. Tourists tend to have a fear of toll roads. Well, we did, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so Lee covered this topic when we first started to start at the beginning of this video. So what happens if you go through a toll and you don't have cash to pay, which is 90% of the people that come out of Orlando mm, International yeah. Airport, drop straight onto a toll road, don't have any cash, uh, and therefore, and the, these these tolls aren't manned. So unless you've, got the, unless you've got the change, you're going to go through and you're going to get you're going to get charged yeah and we'll and come on to the charges in the options yeah. that we've got below and uh, as far as i'm aware it's just they, they want coins don't they I think so we've never we've never actually done the payment only years and years ago when we were throwing coins in and we didn't have enough and the alarm went off yeah so there are rumors as well that in five to ten years time there will be no cash tolls at all in florida that will all be online so mm. at some point everybody's going to have to choose one of these methods or just avoid tolls altogether which is one of the options that we're going to come to in a minute um, so there is a there is a toll directly leaving the the airport, and the road guide goes left for no tolls or right for the tolls. It's not very well signposted, and the majority of the traffic ends up straight on the toll, as we did this time. As we did. So the next question that we get asked is how much is a toll? Well, that totally depends on the toll that you're on, the road that you're on, and the distance that you're actually on the road. So it's usually measured in miles. So roughly between um, the 192 and the airport, it's usually around three dollars to get you to the airport. You go through about two or three toll booths. That's not too bad. But if you're driving from the airport down to Miami, you could spend $20 on toll roads. So it totally depends basically where you're going and how far you travel. So we keep re referencing these options as what's available. So we've come up with five. Now we're not super, super experts on this. This is only our experience and this we may have got learned. We may have got some of this information slightly wrong. We don't think we, we have. Don't think we, we Googled have. it yep. and we just want to pass on what we've learned. Um, some of it's from you guys, yeah. some of it we've experienced ourselves, yeah. some of it we've researched. So there are five options that we believe are the best options for tourists. So this Number is, one. This is basically targeted mainly at Brits who are going on holiday in America. However, it would probably be just as useful to people that live in other states in America that travel to Orlando. Same thing applies. So option one is basically don't use the tolls. Which and is what we've done for the last few trips. 
yeah. So not using the tolls, use Google Maps. Uh, you can do, you can set, there's an option on Google Maps in the satellite navigation mode to avoid tolls. That gets you around it. The downside is it increases your travel time and takes you on a lot of the back roads. Mm. Uh, a lot of people seem to be frightened of using Google Maps because they think it's going to download a lot of data and charge you. Now, there is a mode on, on Google Maps that lets you actually cache the maps for the whole of Florida on your phone locally. And then when you land, you just turn data roaming off and it will work absolutely yeah. fine. You just don't get live traffic updates, but... Yes. Uh, which is useful, but if you've got a data roaming tariff on your mobile, then leave it switched on. The data amount is, is negligible anyway. Yeah. But we do cache it locally just in case we lose signal somewhere, mm -hmm. so at least we've got functional sat nav. So for us, that's what we've been doing. Not not this trip. Well, most of this trip, actually, um, yeah. but for previous trips. And we thought that was the best idea. Avoid the toll roads yeah. and just don't pay them. But Until we were late going to the airport yeah. and said, right, how much would it be to go on the tolls? And then we noticed that the journey time was 50% of what it was. Yeah. So we're like, hang on a minute, this could get us around Florida a lot quicker. So we did a test and we drove on the toll road without any kind of toll scheme, uh, which is one of the other options that we're going to come to. So that's option one. Don't use the tolls at all. And it gets you around it. It's nice and cheap, but just be prepared to wait in a lot of traffic mm -hmm. and basically have your journey times doubled. Okay. Option two. So the second option is pay as you go. So pay as you go basically means that um, you basically have coins and change on you and every time you go through a toll, you stop at the cash lane, you chuck it into the little bucket, it counts it, a little green light goes on and you drive on. So not everybody can do that because I certainly don't carry money no. around with me and you and may be in the car and... Uh, I don't think so. Not back in the day when we used to mm -hmm. use them. Um, and a lot of them are unmanned so there's no way that if you've got like a 20 that you can change it. There's nobody there to do that. Um, so you've got to basically have the change in the car and if you, pay, if you go through the, the toll and you get the green light, you won't get charged other than basically the toll costs. If you do happen to go through a toll, and this is one of the other options as well. Is this you toll do number three? Is this kind of. Three? This is kind of option number three, but this is what will happen if you drive through without any change. So the third option uh, is basically just use the toll roads without paying and go through the e-payments lane or the e-pass lane. Now what will happen is this is called toll by plate. So what it will do is it will take a picture of your registration number and then send a bill to your car rental company. Your car rental company has got your credit card on file for any incidentals. They will then just charge your card for the amount that it costs you for using that toll on that mm -hmm. particular day. The downside is, in addition to the cost of the toll, you pay a convenience charge. So, and it totally depends how much, depending on your car company. So that's the third option. Um, number four. So option number four is use Visitor Toll Pass. We've not tried it, but it does sound pretty good. So it's, you can... it's a scheme that's currently trialled until July. It's been very successful. Um, it's due to end in July 2020, but there are talks that it may be extended. And it, who's it run by? It's run by, um, it's, it's a combined scheme between ePass and the Central Florida Expressway Authority. Um, it basically means that before you leave the UK, you go onto the, uh, toll, the, the Visitor Toll Pass website, Fill out a reservation form in. When you arrive in Orlando, you go to the end of the car desks where you basically pay, uh, you, you, you get your, your vehicle. You pick up your toll pass, you hang it in your wing, you hang it, hang it in your rear view mirror, and each time you basically go through a toll, you basically get charged straight into your credit card. It scraps the convenience charge completely, so you just pay what you go through, and you actually get 23% cheaper than what it says to pay cash. So that is definitely a contender. The downside is you have to physically queue and get pick up your, your pass. They won't ship it to you. Um, the other thing is you've also got to drop it off when you return. If you don't drop it off, they'll charge you $10. So you can't just leave it in your car? No, you can't just leave it in your car. You, they have dump bins around the airport and you can drop it off. So if you forget and leave it in your car, they'll charge you $10. Um, you can't, they won't ship it online, so you can't have it in advance of your arriving. And once you pick up your toll pass, you have to wait for your registration email to come through before you're safe to use it. Uh, most of the time that happens straight away, but it can't, we've heard stories of people waiting like half an hour from picking it up to get in the email. Once you get the email, you know that it's safe to use on the roads. What will happen if you don't do that, it will automatically default to toll by plate. So it'll, it'll, it'll automatically default to option three, where you pay the convenience charge and you pay the toll fee. That's the reason so, we've never tried that, because we hate queuing, don't yeah. we? We like to we, pack, we, skip the lines. We skip the counter, so this is not an option for us. So the fifth option, which is an option for us, and is the one that we use now, is the SunPass Transponder. So this is basically a device that you can buy from supermarkets. So you can buy it from Publix, Walgreens, CVS, and 
uh, there's a couple of others that uh, if, you, if you look on their website you basically get the device and you put it in your car you register it online there's two different types of transponder there's a portable one which you can move from rental car to rental car which is 1999 which is what we bought it's a little sucker that sticks in your window at the side of the, the rear view at the uh, rear view mirror and every time you drive through a toll it takes your transponder number and bills your account uh, there's another one which is 499 which is a, a single car which basically you peel off the back you stick it in and it's locked to that car um, and that's basically for people that, that live there so for rental cars you would probably go for a portable one especially if you're a frequent visitor to Florida like us or if you've got a villa or, or something like that it's better to have a transponder there are some downsides for Brits you have to have a USA address to register we used our hotel which wasn't a problem you also need a USA um, cell number. We didn't have one. So we downloaded an app, an app called Text Now, which gives you a US mobile number and allows you to send and receive text as well as make phone calls free as well. It's not managed via uh, automatically built to your credit card. What you do is you top up your online account with a minimum of $10. You go through the tolls. It consumes the, the cost from that, from your, from your top up balance. When it drops below $10, it re-tops your account up by another $10. So at the minute, we've got about $15 waiting for us when we oh, get way. back to Florida. Mm -hmm. The downside is you've got to remember to put it in your window. You've got to if remember you, to take it off. Yeah. If you forget to take it off your window, then again, option three kicks in. You pay by plate. You pay the convenience charge. So that's like a catch-all option that if you forget to use it, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And it will probably cost you around $6 to get from Orlando International Airport to the touristy areas down on the 192. That covers the convenience charges on the way down there. That's assuming that you use an Alamo plus all the toll charges. Okay? Um, so the benefits of the transponder is it's great for frequent visitors. Um, you, there's an app on your phone that you can actually log on and look at how many times you've used it. The minute you drive through a toll road, you get a text message saying that you've been charged a dollar or, or 89 mm -hmm. cents as the last one that we yeah. use. Handy. You know yep. exactly what's happening on your journey and yep. when you get there and you can you can check up on it. Now, option four, the visitor toll pass and the SunPass transponder, once you use the transponders in your window, it automatically deactivates the auto enrolling from option three. So it will not engage in the, 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 the rental car scheme where if you drive through and you don't, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So one thing you've got to remember to do when you use the SunPass transponder, if you don't use it for a certain period, it actually deactivates your account. Now what you can do is in the app, you can actually disable your account and put it into holiday mode to say that you're not going to be there for a certain amount of time. Now ours is currently set until we go back in May, so it won't basically close my account when they look at it and say this is an inactive account. Um, it's great for using anywhere in Florida and in neighbouring states and the SunPass scheme also lets you use um, the SunPass for parking. So you can park at Orlando International Airport if you're dropping somebody off and pay the parking using your toll pass transponder, uh, which I believe you've got to enrol for in the app. We haven't done that, so we don't have that much experience in doing it. Uh, so there's no contract needed. You can do it completely anonymously, as long as you've got credit on your account, um, and you can set the billing so it's electronic. So every month you'll get an email from the, the from SunPass just showing you what your usage is for that month, and it comes to your email address, and you can check it in real time on the app as well. Mm. Um, so, so we think that's the best option for us because we, for us, yeah. we we go back. So what would you think is the best option for somebody who's maybe just going for two weeks this year? I would say probably if you're only going to use one toll road and that's to get from the airport down to your tourist area and that's the only time you're going to use it or maybe when you're getting back to the airport then I would just say just drive through the toll. Um, the bells might ring. You're not going to get put in jail. You're not going to get a criminal record. You'll just get charged maybe $6 there, $6 back. $12 for your two week stay or whatever your stay length is. It all depends on how much you, if you're going to spend your time around Disney, yeah. then don't bother. But there are some tolls around Disney, so you can get caught out. Yeah, but if you, you know, if you're going to just be around Disney, uh, yeah. uh, it's probably not. For us, it's great. We go to Cocoa Beach, we go to, you know, all sorts of places. Yeah. So I mean, I, I guess I guess the best option for, for visitors is really the visitor toll pass. Yeah, because I would try that. Actually. It scraps the convenience yeah. charge. The downside is you have to queue and get your mm -hmm. transponder and put it in your wingler. Now, we won't do that because... We had a whole experience when we queued last we had, January. Uh, we were queuing for three hours. Three hours. And that was just to get our car. Yeah. Um, so we now always skip the counter with Alamo. So yeah. we won't have to stand in queues. And really getting that, you've got to go back into the queue. Because if you're at the back of the plane and there's 500 people just got off in front of you and half of them have got it, there's 250 people in the queue. So, and unfortunately, there's no, there's no way around that. We, we skip the counter. We will never yeah. queue again. 
So for us, the SunFast Transponder, I would say for the 90% of visitors, use the visitor toll pass. But as I said, it's only a trial until July. They may be extending it. There's no confirmation yet on their website. Um, but feedback that we've received from people that have talked to people that work for the company have said that the trial's gone really well and that they are going to extend it. So a lot of people, as we've said, panic when they go through a toll and they don't have any cash. Um, everybody does it. The worst that's going to happen is you're going to get a charge on your credit card. You get $6, $6 yeah. which is about £4.80, yeah. something like that. Wow. It's cheaper than a parking ticket. Mm. So, we hope we have helped some people out with that. Um, drop us a comment below, let us know what you think. If we've missed anything, if you think we've missed anything, drop us a comment below. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Um, also, we'll, we discuss this kind of thing on our Facebook Orlando group, which is... The Lodge Guys Orlando group on Facebook. So if you've got any questions, ask them on there. There'll yeah. be people to help. We're there all the time, sort of checking in questions and things like that. It's, we pick up a lot of our yeah, information it's, from it's there. It's a great place for us to pick up information, for you guys to pick up information. There's thousands of people on it. It's a great place to learn a lot about Orlando, Florida, Universal and Disney World. And if you've got any questions regarding the five options that we've listed, then please feel free to ask on the fine. comments, send us an email. Um, we'll answer it the best we can. If we can't, we'll refer to somebody who possibly can. Um, as Google. we said, we're not experts. This is just our experience, what we've Googled. As a tourist ourselves, we have to do this research for us personally. We're just sharing our, our tips and workarounds, aren't we? So we hope you've so, enjoyed that video. I'm going to go and get a cup of tea now. And I've also bought a new bag, which I'm going to just start preparing. Oh. I so, have a cup of tea as well. Drop us a comment, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and, and subscribe. See you tomorrow for a new video.